Hi, welcome to my third Macro Express Pro tutorial. In the previous tutorial, I went over all of the commands before this point. So, if you missed that one, you should probably go watch that before you come to this one. Let's get started with keyboard. Now, likely the most common command used in all of Macro Express is text type because this allows you to type text or use your keyboard really in any way on a program. You can tab, you can insert, you can hit end, enter, home. You can also use special keys, function keys, and then you can determine whether you want to simulate the keystrokes, use clipboard to paste your text, or whether you want to send it directly to a control or paste rich text which if you choose rich text it allows you to format the text in some. And you also have symbols that you can insert. Next we have encrypted text. And encrypted text allows you to type text like passwords that are sensitive and you don't want the person over your shoulder seeing you type. You can see that it is masked. You can also store it in a variable if you need it for later. Next up is our caps lock. This allows us to say caps lock, num lock, or scroll lock, and either turn it on or off. Then we can also check the key state. We can check for caps, scroll lock, num lock, shift, control, alt, or either the left or the right windows key, and determine what their state is and place it in a variable. Finally, we have lock and unlock keyboard and mouse. Now, this can be very useful, but it can also be dangerous. If you lock the keyboard and mouse, and then your macro ends before you unlock the keyboard or mouse, it can leave you in kind of an uncomfortable state. However, it can be a very useful command. If you need to move the mouse to a specific position, click, and then you want to move the mouse back to where the user had it, you don't want them to interfere because if they move the mouse while you're clicking, it may click in the wrong spot. So use it with caution, but use it when it makes sense. Logic commands are very valuable. They allow us to branch. So if one set of conditions is true, we can run certain commands, and if not, we can run other commands. Both case, switch case statements, and if else statements allow us to do this. However, if you're not a programmer and you're not familiar with switch case statements, you might want to leave the switch and case statements alone. They're a little more complex and, and not as easy to figure out how to make them work properly. But the if-else blocks are simple enough and they should make more sense. So what does an if block look like? Well, first you have to start with one of these if commands, and you always have to have an end if. You may have an else if you want to run something when the if is not true. So let's go ahead and assemble one and see what that looks like. How about if mouse cursor is the internet navigation, okay, and then we need our end if because we always have to have an end if. Now let's go ahead and put a little dialogue, a message box. How does that sound? And we'll say, Click double. You can click here. Okay, so that's our little if statement. Now, what if I want to add an additional condition to this? I want to know if you're also online. So I can do this. I can say if you're online and copy our end if and paste. Now, if you're online, and the mouse cursor is Internet Navigate, then message box is clickable. But we can make it even more simple than that. We don't need this last end if. I can simply say and. So let's put our and in right there. Now if you're online and if you have a mouse cursor of Internet Navigate, then go ahead and say is clickable. There's other conditions. You could put an or rather than an and. And then if you're online or the mouse is clickable, then do this. Something else we can do, let's go ahead and put in our else and copy this. And now we can say 
not. You can not click here. Okay? So that's how you would define an if else block. So let me go ahead and delete that and let's look at some of our other if commands. Some of the if statements that I use most commonly are if variable and if window. So let's hit those first. So you would specify the variable you want to test here and then you can check to see if it's equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, contains, does not contain, and then you specify a value here that you want to check. This could be some text, this could be a variable, this could be a combination of text and variable that you want to test your variable against. If window. Now with this one you can check to see if the window is focused or if it's the one that's on top, or you can check to see if it's running, whether it's visible or hidden, and then you'd specify the window title here, like this window title. I use this frequently before I go to activate a window to check to see if it's there beforehand. And if it's not, then I'll usually program start that window before I go forward. So also a useful one is if program. So you can say if program is focused or if program is running. Now this may be a program that does or does not have a window. If Macro Express is closed, there will still be a tray icon and the program is still running despite not having a window. This would check if Macro Express Pro was still running regardless of whether its window was open. We can also do if clipboard. I want to scroll up here. If clipboard. You can check to see if the text equals, contains, does not equal, or does not contain something. This can be very valuable in your tests. And then if file exists, that one's pretty obvious, but that one's another very useful one. And then if you're a little more advanced, if registry can be useful. And here you can test to see if a key or a value inside of your registry exists. Close logic. Macro control has several commands that are useful, some that are helpful, and some that are discouraged. Label and go to are used to specify a label and then you can go to that label at any point in your code. This in programming circles is frowned upon. It's not really considered good practice, so I would discourage using that. Comment. This adds a line in your macro that is strictly a comment. Rather than just adding a comment to a line, this is a comment line of its own. Now what this is helpful for is distinguishing sections of your code and describing what they are and what they do. That can be helpful when you come back to it at a later point. Macro run is another very useful command. It will allow you to run another macro. So in this way you can define several macros that do different things and then from a single macro you can run each of those macros to accomplish what you want to do. And then finally password protection. Password protection will allow you to at some point in your macro require a password of the user. So they can't go forward in this macro until they've entered that password. I'm going to delete this comment and let's go on. Within the Macro Express category, I've never used any of these, but it's pretty intuitive what they do, so if you want to use them, feel free. In the mouse section, we have several commands that are useful. We have for the left button, the middle button, and the right button, we can do a button down, a button up, a click, a double click, and then we can do a mouse move, get mouse position, mouse wheel, move mouse to the tray icon. So why would we use a button down and a button up if I can simply do a button click? Well imagine if you wanted to drag an icon or a window from one place to another. You would want to press the mouse button down, move to a new position, and release the mouse button. So let's look at get mouse position. This would assign the X position or horizontal position of the mouse and the Y position of the mouse to 
to a variable so that you could use them later. And you can do this relative to the screen or relative to a window that you're on. You can also mouse move to a specific coordinate that you have predefined and set in variables or you want to set statically. You can do this relative to the screen, relative to the current window, relative to the last position, or relative to a control. You can also set it to the cursor position, in which case it doesn't take any coordinates. They've also given us the nice launch mouse locator button here to quickly give us the access to this little window so we can find the coordinates of our mouse. Mouse wheel allows us to move forward or backwards some number of clicks and mouse tray icon allows us to specify the title of a system tray icon if you hover your mouse over a system tray icon it'll pop up a little bit of text and that's the text that you would put here you can specify exact match or partial match I'm sure you probably don't have Windows 98 anymore but if you do I'm sorry you're out of luck this command will not work for you Once again, I'm going to tie up this tutorial and continue in another one. There's a lot of good stuff coming, so don't miss the next one.